We're here today with direct marketing experts and practitioners to discuss some strategic aspects of the DM industry. Welcome to author Lois Geller, Kat Moriarty and Doug King from the USPS, and Dave Franklin from Forrester. So Dave, let's start with you. Uh, it seems that the definition of direct marketing is changing. How would you define it these days? Um, so I don't know actually if the definition is changing or if the delivery is changing. And you know, I think depending on how we've always defined direct marketing, but if it's marketing directly to an identifiable individual, I'm not sure that that's changing. Um, but I think there's a lot going on in the industry that makes it feel like everything is changing. And by that, I think, you know, some of the, the, the obvious things, I think, um, you know, there's more channels than ever before um, that are addressable. So whether that's sort of traditional channels that were not addressable, becoming addressable, the likes of TV, for example, or whether it's just new channels, and whether it's mobile, and social, etc. It just feels like there, there are so many new ways to do direct marketing. Um, at the same time, I think there's more data than ever before. Um, so a great stat recently from the from a former um, Amazon um, employee who said that there, there, there'll be more data generated by humans in 2009 than was created in the entirety until 2009. So you just think of all of that data that, I, that is out there, and I think as direct marketers, we've always been the more data-driven marketers. And then I think there's some sort of less clear delineation. So maybe if if there is a change, I think that's it too. So for example, is search a direct channel or or not? So I, I think if there's anywhere where things are, are sort of squishy, I think it's just a lot of change rather than the definition necessarily changing. As practitioners, Kat and Doug, uh, what are your thoughts on the definition or the delivery aspects, as Dave had mentioned? Well, one of the things I, I think, and, and I agree totally with Dave, is uh, because of all those channels and all the data collecting, I think direct marketers, in a sense, have taken on a whole new role of how they look to communicate. I think now, more than ever, because of the data, it's driving, uh, you know, science in the sense of, the behavioral habits of the consumers or whoever your audience happens to be. With that in mind, uh, collecting all that data, there's a reason for collecting it, and, and they're strategically building a background behind that data collection so that they can use it to market through all the different channels. And, and of course, you know, uh, they want to learn the behavior of the individual so that they don't just go and get into every media channel. Some channels work better than others with different types of, you know, individuals. So I think there's a whole science behind it, a psychological science. So I think direct marketing has gotten, uh, I, I think because of all the channels that they've mentioned and the database gathering, I think it's gotten more complex to where you take a deeper dive into the individual to really gain and gather and, and, and engage them uh, with relevant information. I really feel that the uh, the whole world of direct marketing is exploding uh, just exponentially. Uh, it seems all at once. And I feel that when we talk about something such as uh, SEM and how that uh, ties in, it's really the, that's the customer uh, starting the conversation. For the first time in direct marketing, we have the customer starting the conversation. And uh, the direct marketer now has to decide how they are going to respond. And when they do respond to the conversation and how they continue, how they keep it continued on, that's a key. I think that the social media, the the Web 2.0 and all this this uh, media is, is continuing that, finding ways to do that and to gain knowledge from that. So you're not only getting data about the customer, you're getting data about the entire segment and about some opinions from the customers, uh, trends that are building. And all these things had to be folded into the whole direct marketing conversation. And I, I think that in the past, it was uh, figuring out a way for us to get our message across and uh, settle on that. But now it's pretty much listening to the customer and finding out where they want to go and uh, how they want to continue the conversation with us, not only in what media do they want to continue it, but uh, how do they want us to uh, limit the conversation that we speak to them and introduce new things to them. I agree with uh, Doug on this one. We used to push out major direct marketing campaigns and then test and figure out which segments were going to respond. Now the customer pulls us in in whatever channel he wants or she wants to get us. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of different strategies and methodologies out there. Uh, Lois, what do you think is the most important strategy that direct marketers need to keep in mind to compete in the current market? 
Well, I think that the most important strategy that direct marketers can can do uh, now is to stay with the fundamentals that we already learned many years ago. I think we really have the edge as direct marketers today because we know that if we have a plan with objectives, strategies, and tactics, that we have an offer that's really compelling going to the right market, it doesn't really matter where we do it, but that that particular skill set and that measurement and the conversion rates and the response that we've learned all along really stand us in good stead in today's marketplace. So um, we're finding that uh, uh, direct mail can still push the marketing machine. You know, people say, no, more direct mail, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I'm on Twitter and I have about 6,500 followers on Twitter and I've tested all kinds of different offers and I'm also a ghost Twitterer for many of my clients. Now, I've never really had a response and a conversion rate that I could point to yet, even though I have one one of my clients, I have 25,000 people there. You would think that that would be a statistically valid sample, that if I offer up something, that I would get a response. So I think that um, a lot of the social media might be slow in relationship building. We still have a nonprofit here in our client base, and and when we have to get a response and we have to run our charity this year, we've got to get a direct mail campaign, and we have to get it out, and we have to get a great response. The best part is that we're all alone in the mailboxes, so we're getting even better responses than we have in the past. So I can't really say the most important strategy uh, is as a tactic. I have to say that the most important strategy is getting still into the right hands at the right time with the right offer in whatever medium we're going to be in. Dave, what do you think uh, marketers need to keep in mind? The discipline that direct marketers have always exhibited, so the focus on test and learn, the focus on measurement, I think taking that discipline to these newer tactics, channels, call them what we will, is a huge opportunity for the direct marketer. So to, to your question on, on this sort of what's the most important strategy, I think if there's one thing that um, direct marketers can elevate their game, I think it's in becoming the customer advocate for the organization. And so again, going back to your sort of has the definition of direct marketing changed? Not necessarily. But I think the opportunity, again, as the group that very, very often owns customer data and customer knowledge, the opportunity to be the customer advocate. And what, my, what I mean by that is focusing on the customer experience. So the, the, um, the relevance of the messaging that we're sending, um, the context strategy. So I agree again with Lois that I don't think direct mail is going away, but thinking about when is the right time to use each of these things for whom and why, um, and just act as, as the sort of glue to to other groups and, and as I say, sort of elevate everybody's game, I think is, the, is if not um, a huge opportunity, definitely an important strategy. Now, Doug and Kat, what are, what are your perspectives? Well, I tell you, I, I actually think that uh, one of the most overall strategies that a direct marketer needs to keep in mind within their company is to be continually focusing on how to prove the value of the discipline to the uh, corporate thinkers and to the corporate visionaries and to the CEO. Also, proving the, the value of the testing, the ongoing testing can sometimes uh, get bogged down and sometimes you can feel like uh, you're not gaining from that, but you constantly are, especially the testing of the two different, you know, various media together, the synergy of the media. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, talk from a lot of our uh, major mailers of how the email and the direct mail are working so very well together that in getting into a conversation with someone in an email in any possible way, continuing that conversation, and then all of a sudden, uh, wow, the next direct mail piece that comes is welcomed, recognized, and uh, read in depth. But it's, it's but if you don't get that conversation going with the customer, um, then you become nothing more than another something assailing them that they're trying to brush aside. And uh, Lois did mention that the mailboxes are less cluttered these days. We're not so happy about that, but it does work very much, very well as an advantage, advantage for those direct marketers, a time to jump on that. So. To build a real strong customer relationship, and that's really the purpose of it, to get them engaged with your product or service, you have to be personal. Um, personalization in all those media channels is possible. 
And I, and I think, especially with the email and direct mail, of course, and yes, they do work very well together. And, and, in, and corresponding and communicating with those two media channels, you can personalize it in, in many ways to really let the person know you know them. And then, number two, you have the metrics in place. So you can see how this individual is interacting. So you can actually find out, are we doing the right thing or do we need to improve? So that's really major in, in accomplishing uh, the types of communications and conversations you want to have with customers. So the one-to-one -one type of conversation is probably uh, the winning conversation with all the media channels, if you can. And, and of course, direct mail and email, the first foremost, in my mind, that um, makes that happen.